You probably clicked on this video because you're either contemplating swapping out the straight knives on your DW734 thickness planer for a helical cutter head, or you've already purchased the helical head and you want to know how to install it properly. In either case, you're in the right place. To be clear, this instructional video is for the 12.5 inch thickness planer by DeWalt. If you're outside the US, that's probably the DW733. If you're in the US, then that's probably the DW734. There are a few minor differences, but the process is pretty much the same. If you have the 13 inch planer by DeWalt, that's the model number DW735. And the process for re replacing that cutter head is a bit different. You may still get some good tips out of this video, but I'll also recommend that you watch this excellent video by Ben at the Snecker Show for more specific information regarding that model. Before we get into how to replace the cutter head, I want to give a brief overview of why you might want to consider switching to a spiral head with carbide inserts. If you want to skip over this discussion, I've included chapters in this video so you can skip right to the section that you're looking for. Welcome back to the wood shop. My name's Brett. So you might be wondering, is this even a worthwhile upgrade to make, especially considering the cost? So I'm going to give a quick list of the pros and cons you might want to consider before investing your hard-earned money. The stock cutter head on the DeWalt 734 has three straight knives on it, and as it spins, each knife strikes the board in quick succession in kind of a scooping action. And as each knife strikes the board, it scoops out a long strip of wood. This can leave behind kind of a washboard effect, which can be very noticeable. Those straight knives striking across the board can cause an even bigger problem. They can actually tear out wood fibers rather than cutting them off smoothly, especially when planing against the grain. In my next project, I'm going to be working with some highly figured woods, and I don't want those straight knives to cause that tear out problem. That's why I'm swapping out the cutter head for a spiral cutter head with carbide inserts. Those smaller carbide cutters are aligned at an angle, so they shear or slice the wood fibers rather than chopping at them. And because those cutters are aligned in a helical pattern, that may reduce or even eliminate that washboard effect. Planers produce a lot of wood shavings and that can cause problems with dust collection. And it's not just the volume of shavings that cause a problem. With the straight knives, the shavings are in long strips, which can quickly clog up your dust collector. By contrast, the small cutters on a helical head produce small wood shavings, which can more easily be cleared out by your dust collection system. Another benefit of a helical cutter head is that, believe it or not, your machine will be less noisy. The straight knives, as they make contact with the wood, make more noise than the little cutters do, by as much as 50%. And that doesn't mean you still won't have to wear hearing protection. Have you seen my baseball? The machine is still loud, but people around your shop might be grateful that you made the switch. The carbide cutters on the helical cutter head last about 10 times as long as their high-speed steel counterparts. That means that you won't have to change them nearly as often. And when you do, you don't have to remove the cutters you simply loosen the screw and then rotate them 90 degrees. And they're indexed so that they realign automatically. And if you do hit a staple or something in your wood and you nick one of those cutters, you may only have to rotate one to three of the cutters to correct the problem. And once you've rotated the carbide cutters four times, you do have to change them out, but that's also a simple process. Some woodworkers will even save money by installing a helical cutter head. The DeWalt steel knives are double-edged, my new carbide cutters have four sharp edges, and each of those edges will stay sharp 10 times as long as the steel knives. That means that I would have to buy 20 sets of steel knives to do the same amount of work as one set of carbide cutters. At the time of filming this video, the DeWalt planer knives sell for $75 a set. 75 times 20 is $1,500. Compare that to about $110 for a set of carbide inserts at findbuytool.com. That means that the initial investment of the cutter head will more than pay for itself by the time you ever get around to buying a new set of carbide inserts. So to recap, our five reasons to upgrade are improved cut quality, improved dust collection, sound reduction, convenience, and cost savings. It's a pretty good argument for buying a new cutter head, but to make an informed decision, you should consider the downsides as well. For one thing, a helical cutter head will require more power to drive. The reason for that is that a cutter head with three straight knives gives the motor a split second to recover between each contact made with the wood. With a helical head, there's less time for recovery between each point of contact. That means that your machine may bog down a bit more easily. 
That can be avoided by taking smaller cuts with each pass, but it'll still be noticeable. Another potential downside is the initial investment cost. We already discussed that cost savings is one of the pros, but that really only applies if you're using your machine regularly. Some woodworkers only change out their planer knives once or twice a year, and at that rate it would take a long time to work through even four sets of knives, which would add up to the cost of the helical cutter head. So if you only use your planer a few times a year, that's something to take into consideration. Now I did a search for the least expensive helical cutter head for the DeWalt 734, and what I found was that the best price was from a website called findbytool.com. At first glance, I was a little skeptical, simply because of the domain name. It doesn't sound like an English speaker came up with that. It sounds like it's overseas. And it is. The copy on the website also reads like it wasn't written by a native English speaker. It made me a little nervous to shell out over $300 to an offshore company. But my reservations were soon put at ease because their customer service is right on top of things. Their communication was at least as good, if not better, than Amazon. I got a text and email update every step of the way with each step of the shipping process. And it arrived pretty quickly and in great condition. Let me show you. Yeah, I just want to show you how this comes packaged from Find By Tool. Nice foam padding. Oh, that's nice. The cutter head comes without the inserts installed. That'll make it easier for installation. So the carbide inserts come packaged like that. Ten in each of these, and there's six of them, so you get 60 blades. That's pretty good. And these are the screws to put those in, and tools, and Torx drivers. Like two different sizes. Very nice. Are there instructions? Nope. Well, that's what you need me for. Now let's get to the reason why you're watching this video. Before you start, you'll want to give yourself plenty of time. I'd recommend you give yourself four hours to complete this job. It may take you less than that, but you don't want to be in a rush. You paid a lot of money for this cutter head and the planer, and rushing will only lead to problems. Doing it right is more important than doing it fast. I want to go fast! You may even want to sit down and watch this entire video before you start. You'll also want to make sure that you have everything you need before you begin. Here's a list of what you'll need to do the job. A number two Phillips screwdriver, a rubber mallet, the T30 Torx driver that comes with the DeWalt machine, a T25 Torx bit, an Allen key set with 4mm and 5mm hex keys, a 23mm socket and wrench, 15 16 inch will work as well, snap ring pliers, 3 in 1 oil, lithium grease, two wooden strips about 12 inches long and 3 quarters of inch thick, a clean container to catch small parts, a small brush, gloves, a vacuum and or compressed air. Make sure your workspace is clean and you have plenty of light. We begin by removing some screws. Most of them can be removed with the Torx driver that comes with the machine. I discovered later that the yellow side panels don't need to be detached from the top. That can all be removed as one unit. It should go without saying that you don't want your machine plugged in while you're working on it. But guess what? I just said it anyway. Remove the chip deflector cover. This exposes the cutter head. You can use the screw gun for removing the screws, but don't use one to put the new screws in. It's too easy to over tighten. The carbide inserts are brittle and can crack under too much pressure. Remove the knives. Be careful in handling these. Even when dull, they're super sharp. Raise the thickness planer to the top and lock it in place. Use a 3mm hex key to loosen the set screw on the chain sprockets. And then inspect the sprockets for wear.
With the planer still on its side, remove the two screws that secure the chain cover. It's a good idea to take a picture of the chain configuration prior to disassembly, so you'll know how to accurately reassemble them later. With a 5mm hex key, remove the screws that hold the retainer plate, and then remove the entire threaded rod on both sides. Oh, that was just finger tight. I didn't even need a tool to get that out. The driver wheel is held in by a 23mm nut. A 15 16 inch socket will work as well if you don't have metric. Next, the lock lever needs to come out. You won't be putting this back in with the new cutter head, but go ahead and save it, just in case you want to put your old cutter head back in for some weird reason. You may want to wear gloves to take the drive belt off. The belt is ribbed and it fits into grooves on the drive pulley, so it won't just slide off. You have to work it around bit by bit. Then put a small block of wood against the cutter head so you can pull the pulley wheel off. I found a tapered wedge works well. This little oval key is small but very important. Don't lose it. Removing the C-shaped retainer clips, or snap rings as they're called, is nearly impossible without a snap ring pliers. So make sure you have yours handy. Can you tell I'm kind of a noob at this? I thought I'd be able to get at the end of the cutter head without removing that second threaded rod, but it turns out I was wrong. The chains would be easier to take off without it there as well. I also wasn't sure if these were called gears or sprockets. I've now learned that gears nest together and propel each other, and sprockets don't. They're used to drive a chain. You'll also notice I have some padding on the planer bed just in case the cutter head were to tip too far and damage the, either the cutter head or, worse yet, the planer bed. Once all of those parts are removed, give everything a good cleaning. We don't want any dust or debris to interfere with the moving parts. Then apply some gear grease to the outer bearing rings and put a thin coat of 3-in-1 oil on the new cutter head. I use the dry loop version, which should resist caking. I have links to all the tools and products I used in the description below this video. Using the affiliate links to make your purchases is one way you can reward me for making this free instructional content. Another way you can support my channel is by giving a super thanks. There's a link to the thanks right next to my channel name and the like button. You may have to click on the three dots depending if you're on mobile or desktop. Thanks in advance for your support. Here's where you'll use the two strips of wood to persuade the cutter head into place. Whatever you do, don't bang directly on the threaded spindle. You could end up busting it off, which would really suck.
This is my first time working with bearings and snap rings and all this. I'm not really a, a machine guy. I know how to operate them, but not how to put them together. So I wasn't sure how far to seat these bearings, but through a little bit of trial and error, and it makes perfect sense now that I see it, it needs to be in far enough. So can you see this little, can you see this groove here? I need a better pointer. If you can see this, this little groove right in here, just outside the bearing, and that's where the snap rings have to seat into, and that way they can't back out. So it's the same on both sides. There's just a little groove right outside where the bearing sits. So the whole assembly needs to be pushed in far enough, but not too far, because the snap rings have to fit on both sides. Hope that makes sense. Then it's just a matter of putting all the clean lubed parts back on in the reverse order that you took them off. If you're doing this upgrade with the Shelix cutter head, I believe the mounts require you to set the carbide inserts underneath this little back brace. But this cutter head from Fine By Tool doesn't have that. You just need to make sure that your insert is centered on the screw hole before you tighten it down. I thought I might be able to reuse the lock lever at first because there's a space for it to go in at the end of the cutter head. But once I got it installed, I couldn't get it to spin freely in the forward direction. It wanted to lock in both directions, so I took it back out. Now for a little test to make sure I did it right. If you do this, make sure you're wearing your personal protective equipment and don't stand directly in the line of fire just in case something comes loose.
Now for the pizza resistance. We're going to run some wood through this thing and see how it performs. I hope you found this video useful, helpful, and maybe a little entertaining. Good luck and Godspeed in your next woodworking project. As always, be safe and love each other.